Moltz and I'm here at a Ranger booth at Creativation. Check it out, some cool stuff in here. And I'm gonna do some demos and Kelly's behind the camera. Everyone say hi to Kelly. She is uh, the social media, really everything at Ranger. She does packaging. I mean, I'm gonna totally build you up, Kelly. See, that's gonna make her laugh and she's blushing behind, but she does so much. And she's even gonna show you some of the cool new packaging that uh, we're doing in the line of Distress. But first, I'm gonna start with the demo and I wanna share with you something very, very exciting in the world of Distress. And those are the new Distress Oxide sprays. So, as you know, we have Distress Oxide ink pads, right? We released these last year. And the nice thing about an ink pad, of course, we can blend, we can stamp, we can do all sorts of great things. But to have this same dye and pigment fusion in a spray, man, is a whole new thing. And the great thing about a sprayable oxide is that we can do larger areas like art journals, backgrounds, canvas, anything porous. It's excellent on wood. So if you do any type of vignettes or anything and you want to create a great shabby kind of pickling effect, this oxide spray is cool. And what made it so kind of complex is people go, well, Tim, what's so exciting about a spray? I can just take a re-inker and add water. No, no, no. Because the thing to understand about an oxide is that it is reactive with water. And when you wet it, it is designed to oxidize. So it wasn't as simple to make a spray version by just adding water because the entire bottle would have oxidized. So it took the chemists uh, pretty much as long as they were making the ink pads to really figure out a way to take this formulation and take this dye and pigment and make it sprayable. So the oxide sprays, there are 12 colors available. Have a feeling there will be more if all goes well in the world. Uh, but I'll just show you the bottle. Now the bottle itself, it does look a little funky. Like when you first get it, you're gonna see all this kind of weird, crusty stuff on there. That is by design. If you look right there in between those labels, there is our pigment, there is our dye. All right. Now these guys, when you use them, you do need to shake it up. Now if you read the label on the bottle for those makers that, that's how excited they are for this oxide spray. I'm telling you, everyone is losing their mind everywhere they go. But the thing about this, when you use it, you do need to shake it up. And the label will say that you kind of shake side to side because anytime you have a spray bottle, you do a lot of, sp a lot of shaking, you could risk it kind of coming out of the neck. I have a little trick. When I do that, I just take a paper towel. You can see I removed all the clear tops. I took them all off of this because when I use it, I'll just take it, take the colors I want, wrap it in a paper towel, and then I can just shake it crazy, right? This way, if it does leak, it's going to go in the paper towel. But, you know, if you want, you can shake it side to side, but you got to give it a quick mix. Keep in mind, though, that the oxide spray is not a pigment spray. We're not worrying about the sprayer clogging with too much pigment. It's not a mica kind of thing. It's the fact that we need this dye and pigment to mix up in order for it to create what we want to create. I'll just take probably some cool colors to start with this morning. Need to throw in a little bit of brown because, hello. They'll stay mixed for quite a while. Absolutely. So you don't have to each time. Well, then when I pick it up and I go to use it, I might do that, right? But at least the first time when I go to kind of mix up the colors I want to use, I just want to give it a really good shape. But it doesn't take long. It honestly doesn't. All right, so let's talk about backgrounds. Now, when we do backgrounds, we can work on watercolor paper, tags, anything that's going to be porous. When we apply these oxide sprays, you're going to see, I'll just move these back a little bit so you can see. It's got great coverage, right? We've got that opacity of that pigment, but we also have the intensity of a dye because that's what oxide is. It's a fusion of dye and pigment. You could do the entire thing in oxide sprays, but if you do, your background, in my opinion, becomes a little one-dimensional, a little flat because everything looks a little chalky. So what I suggest when I use these you see the difference between these? That little bit of kind of color that pops through the back, that's using spray stain. So just because you have oxide sprays doesn't mean you need to forget about any kind of sprayable ink that you might have because just going in with some dyes, that's gonna provide some great concentration of color into certain areas, right? Perfect. Now let's go in and dry it. And I'm just going to start drying it and then I'm going to go in and add a little bit of water. You can see here that beautiful color on that media mat. Oh my gosh. So the thing also about any time you do a background is when to add water. You can add water at a lot of different times. If I add water right when I add the ink, it's going to get my colors to blend and create kind of a watercolory wash. But as we dry Distress, if it dries a little bit, then I go in with some water, you're going to start seeing a whole different kind of reaction. Also, the more water I add, especially with an oxide, and I'll even show you over here on the media map, it's going to oxidize. So the more water we add on an oxide spray, the more we kind of get that cool oxidation. If we want to move this around, you can certainly pick this up, 
kind of create a little bit of that drippage. Bring it back down. Look at that. I just want to make a print of that media mat. Can you make that? You could. Because this is glass, we could spray this with water and lay a sheet of paper. Whenever I make a print off of this, I like to wet my paper. If I wet my paper first, just kind of mist it and make a print, it sucks up into the paper much better. Look at this background. So what you're seeing is that cool oxidation from the oxide spray, but we're also seeing that punch of vivid color from using just our spray stain. So very, very important to not forget what we have. Let me just wipe this off. I don't want to. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted that, didn't you? You're like, yes. I just want to. I, I want to yeah. put my phone in that. Yeah. I was gonna take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just gonna jab right this off there. right in there. So right now we have a background, but as with anything distress, it gets better with water. So now I'm gonna do some drips and watch. Watch what's happening when you get a significant amount of water over oxide. That's why I'm kind of focusing in there. See how that area just starts to kind of create that softer, softer look. But watch when I dry this it's going to oxidize even more and I love that this background is so vivid and so blended but so easy. If I went to do this with an ink pad and a blending tool, which you could, it would have taken a lot of time to build up this much layer. So True. that's why when as a designer, because uh, you know, let's face it, as makers there's a ton of product. Like really do I need this? Do I need this? It depends on how you're going to use your product. As a designer the reason we're always looking for different ways to deliver the product is depending on how you want to use it. If you like to do mixed media backgrounds and you only had ink pads to do with it, it's not going to be your easiest thing. So that's why finding a delivery system and seeing how you want to work with product, that's what makes it right for you. It's also very cool to stencil with. You can take this and you can uh, spray it right through a stencil and you can create a cool oxidized background, but this is what I love about uh, working with the oxide sprays. It's a sprayable, beautiful dye pigment ink that can be used all on its own, because this is still pretty, or you can mix it with different bits of your dyes, and even if you didn't have spray stains, we could have done our, our little printing, our little monoprint. Now, I'll show you one thing. If you are gonna print with inks, we'll kind of do that. I didn't show this yesterday, so this is really key. If I wanted to make a print, because we were talking about printing that stuff, because that stuff was already there, I would have printed on the glass. But if I want to layer a background, you need to work on some type of craft mat, right? Whether it's the Ranger craft sheet or whether it's the craft mat on your media mat, because that's going to hold inks totally different. You saw all the way around that tag when I sprayed that things were kind of, could get a little muddy. So if you're doing printing, work on either one of these surfaces and I'll show you why. Here I'll take well, let's just take an oxide pad. Just gonna push some of this down. But then I'm also gonna go in with a little bit of my sprays. Just gonna give that a quick shake. Spray some of that down. And believe it or not, this amount of spray is more concentrated than that ink pad, okay? It's a totally different formulation. There's just more color in that bottle. So a little goes a much longer way than squishing out your ink pad. That's why it's important to have just different ways to apply it. So I'll take some oxide spray and I'm still going to go in with some spray stain. Let's do a little bit of yellow there, that'll be good. And we'll go in with a little bit of picked raspberry. Okay, so now I'm going to print. I'm just going to take a little bit of water, make sure everything's kind of nice and wet and juicy. Let's take some distressed watercolor cardstock and I'll just go in. First thing, we're just going to make a print. You're going to get what you get and you don't throw a fit, okay? <laughs> uh, when you go to build layers, it's really important that you go a little bit at a time. If we just kept going into that, wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. So if I keep going wet on wet on wet, it's going to blend everything together. Sometimes good if you only, you know, used cool colors. But other than this, it could just make absolute mud. So just dry it. It doesn't have to be crispy dry. It could just be dry. And I think it's also important that if you're new to mixed media or you're not sure what colors to use, I just tell people, pay attention to what you're doing, okay? Just because you put all this ink down there, if you do this background and you go, you know what, I like that, you're done. Get another piece of paper and start over. Don't sit there and go, well, I still have ink there, so I probably should go back in there. Well, probably not if you liked it at one step because it's never going to be what it was, right? So if you go back and you're like, ooh, I wish I would have, <laughs> yeah, you wish you would have. But in my case, I'm going in because I just want to layer. So now when I layer, I'm just going to treat this kind of as a palette. 
And this is what's really important about this mat. You can see that no matter how much ink or water I've put onto this mat, my colors have maintained their area. It hasn't kind of mucked together that it would on glass. So I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a print. Oh, look at that. Add a little bit of water to that. And I love showing this because a lot of times really people just get kind of so in their head about choosing, I don't know what to choose and what if I make mud? Well, if you just layer it, you don't. If I put that piece of paper down and was like, ooh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, you did it, you know, <laughs> you did that. That's why I just say print. And every time you print, you have those vacant spaces and you're like, but I missed a spot there. Yeah, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So when you're in the privacy of your own craft room doing this, and you go in and double dip when it's wet. I was watching. Yeah. And then you make mud, I'm like, you'll hear a little voice going, yeah. But here's what's really great. Now take a look at this background. Look how cool that, that color just oxidized because we were able to do that oxide spray. But I was still getting those really bright pops of color because I also went in with those colors of spray stain. So just some simple backgrounds, whether you're going to, to do printing, which does give you more control as to where you want colors, or if you just don't care and you're gonna go in and spray those colors out, that's one of the things I'm really excited about, oxide sprays. Now I'm just gonna talk real quick about one other distressed thing. Kelly, how's your arm? You doing all right? I'm good. Okay, good. One other thing uh, that's new in the world of distress are distress archival inks. Now, just wanna say that Distress Archival Inks are simply the archival ink formulation that Ranger has had for years. It's an oil-based, waterproof ink in distress colors. It doesn't do anything special, anything different, other than it is a palette that I love. So these are some of the distress colors. There's only 12 of these. They're sold in uh, mini ink pads. They're sold in sets of warm, cool, and dirty. What I like about an oil-based, waterproof ink is first of all, if I'm stamping, and you can see down here, this is stamped in Distress Archival Ink. This is stamped in Distress Ink, right? When you wet them, Distress is obviously reactive. That's what it's gonna do. But this is a total waterproof ink. But more importantly, and you're like, why did, what does it matter if you have a waterproof ink? Well, if you're doing a lot of backgrounds that have a lot of color, especially oxide, an oil-based ink is going to sit better on a pigment background than a solvent would. So the fact that I could stamp on top of it later, I really get some nice color. Even that barn door red is stamping really nice over brown and blue, even though it's a dye ink. So that's why I'm such a champion, such a fan of archival and the fact that we now have some distressed colors in it. Even more exciting. <laughs> yeah. So that's the world of distress. I'm going to clean this up and uh, we're probably going in and do some alcohol inks. But Kelly, maybe you want to tour and show them the yes, new packaging. Yes, definitely. Speaking of which, this Save new packaging spot, just rocks. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Hey everyone, Tim's just cleaning up and resetting for alcohol ink, but I wanted to show you guys um, the new packaging. We've redesigned uh, Tim's patch packaging look from the brown to a grayscale. Um, so you will start seeing that um, come to your stores. Um, so first I'm going to show you the alcohol ink sets. Um, so here's the three new sets. And let me know if you guys can still hear me. Um, and if you have any questions, now's a great time to ask and I can answer them. Um, but you can see the new grayscale packaging. It's very, still very distressed, um, still very grungy, and it just really makes the colors pop. Here are the new oxide sprays. And you'll see the crayon sets. And here are some archival swatches over here. So you can see the crisp lines. Oh great, you can hear me, that's great. <laughs> and thank you. And um, the oxide spray swatches. And then let me go to this side. I'll show you some more of the packaging. Um, oxide pens. We are not, we have no oxide pens in the works right now. Um, the archival inks are shipping in February. So, do you guys like the new packaging? You like the grayscale? Yeah, it looks really, really cool. The colors really pop against it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and see if um, Tim is already for us.
You ready for us? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go back and we are gonna do alcohol ink next. More archival colors coming. That I'm not sure of, but uh, that could be a possibility. Metallic inks. Yes, we all would love metallic inks. I'm glad you like the grayscale. Okay, I'm gonna sneak back in so we can see alcohol ink. All right, so did you show them all that new packaging? They loved the new oh my packaging. Gosh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it just makes the colors really stand out. That's what I think. Having that gray packaging over uh, this brown, just yeah. totally different. Yeah, totally mm -hmm. different. All right, we're going to get into alcohol inks now and talk about a lot of cool, exciting things in the world of alcohol inks. Now, the alcohol inks, what's nice about them, they are a solvent based ink, and alcohol inks are really designed for non porous surfaces, okay? Got some music or something. That's awesome. Oh, Good morning, everyone. oh there we have it. Turkey Tray area to exchange your voucher for the travel tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. They're very, very convenient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're super convenient. The drawing will be done tonight at the award ceremony, which starts at 5 o'clock. There's a must be present. Don't forget to stop by this at a nice big spot in booth 1025 for some amazing demonstrations that are going on all day long. Then the problem fun is that I have to okay. have to get every color. You should do the announcements. That'd be really fun. They would love your accent. They would totally listen to it. Yes, of course. All right. So alcohol inks are a translucent dye designed for non-porous surfaces. And uh, probably for the last year and a half, like this particular art medium has taken off. It's been used, I mean, it's been around in the Ranger world for 10 years, which is kind of crazy to even think that. But the fact that more and more artists are using this medium because it can work on glass and metal and Yupo and alcohol, um, alcohol ink cardstock, all sorts of cool things. This has been just a fun, fun color to use. But in addition to having translucent inks, we've also released mixatives throughout the years. And these mixatives, are pigments and these pigments when you use them with the dyes they separate they create these polished stone and agates you may have seen all those cool videos on YouTube and that's really been our alcohol ink world for many many years but this year we decided to just introduce something totally new and I believe that the idea of this was really inspired by what we were able to do with distress oxide and that is the ability to combine dyes and pigments. So these are the new alcohol pearls. And what the alcohol pearls are, they are a dye and pigment fusion. So that pearl bonds to the ink, okay? It's not like taking ink and mixative like we used to do before. This is a pearlized alcohol ink. And when you use it, it creates the most amazing pearl luster on your background. So this is what the alcohol pearls look like and I'll pass them around so if you're doing some video you can kind of get that shimmer because the light really needs to hit it. You get in that, picking it up, you can see that it's just a beautiful pearl shimmer that happens on your ink and there's no texture to it, it's not a mixative, it's not that strong pigment and you can see on the bottom of each of these bottles that each color of ink has that same color of pearl. So when you mix it up and you shake it, it immediately fuses itself to the ink. So when I use this onto a background, that dye and pigment doesn't separate the way mixatives did. It actually stays as one. It creates that pearlescent look. So when I'm doing uh, backgrounds with all of my inks, you can see that when it dries, we have that beautiful pearl finish. And again, all of these layers still stay totally smooth. So the colors, there are just some cool colors with some cool names. You know, we have uh, colors like Enchanted and Deception and yeah, really cool Sublime and Villainous and Envy and Smolder and Mineral. Just I wanted to create kind of this feeling of just a very rich, rich look because I think that's what it does. It has such a great look to it. Now keep in mind that these pearls can also be used with alcohol ink. When you use it together, it creates beautiful backgrounds just like we can do with our regular inks because we can take that pearl and also mix it with some of our colors to create this kind of fluid background. Now before I get into the demo of how these pearls work, we also have new substrates, which anytime we have new consumable papers, we love that as paper crafters. We have three new alcohol ink cardstocks. We have a matte black, we have a brush silver, and we have a silver sparkle. Now, the black matte, I don't really use it much for alcohol ink just because I just don't. I like to work on white areas, but if you're going to use this black, you would use the snow cap mixative. You would need that white as a foundation. But this black cardstock is like my new favorite for matting any type of cards or artwork because it's almost like a rubberized paper. You feel it. It's a very thick board, 
beautiful, beautiful cardstock. It's like crazy, crazy feel. Yeah, awesome for working on your background projects. But these other papers, this brush silver and silver sparkle, create really unique effects when you use them with alcohol. Like this one, this brush metallic, almost looks a little pearly to me. You know, if you use it with inks, it's nice because you don't have that reflective mirrored cardstock that would get with a metallic. So it was something that was a little bit more industrial, and I like using it for grunge background. But the paper that everyone is going crazy for at the show, which, no surprise, it is a craft world after all, and that is going to be uh, the Silver Sparkle. It's this beautiful sparkly paper. It is not a glittered cardstock. There is no texture to it. It's completely smooth. This is printed paper. But the beauty of it, it is a cardstock, and it is not the same as like the deco sheet. This was, if you uh, are familiar with the ideology line, this is the ideology deco sheet that we had a few years ago. It's since been discontinued, but this was just a vinyl, right? That when you ink it, you can make different colors of sparkle. This, my friends, is cardstock, and you can see it's completely uh, fine, fine little sparkle, but take a look at what it looks like inked, okay? When you ink this, you have just this unbelievable sparkly color. It works just like an alcohol ink cardstock would, which means everything is going to blend and drip. It's not going to soak right into that because it is paper and it doesn't bleed through the back, which is very, very nice. And I love the finish of this. It is also embossable. So if you're using it with embossing folders, any kind of 3D folders or fades, it really holds up well to uh, embossing or die cutting. I think it's really, it's great. It's totally, totally cool. Oh, absolutely. You can die cut it. You can punch it. It's just cardstock. So, yeah, it's not even laminated. Absolutely. You can die cut that as well. So those are all cardstock. But then we have another substrate, something totally new that you can't die cut. <laughs> and that's really going more for the artist because we know that in the alcohol ink world, in addition to being paper crafters and mixed media, there's a lot of people that are doing art, fine art, painting, and things like that. So. We've teamed up with a company called Masterpiece who does a lot of surfaces for the art world. They do canvas boards and things like that. And we release hardcore art panels. And what they are, it is a board, okay? It's hardcore, it's wood, that has been laminated with a vinyl type substrate. So it's not peel and stick, you can't peel this off. It's on there. But this surface is going to allow us to do all types of painting, stamping, inking, and you have art, you have an art board. Now these are available in four by four packs, five by seven packs, and then multi-packs of rectangles and squares. But take a look at just some of the kind of the cool art you can do um, just on that board, because we can do our inks, we can do our blending. This is the alcohol lift ink on there, where you can stamp and lift, so it's a liftable surface. It has very similar kind of uh, reactions to Yupo, but it is not Yupo, it has a little bit of a texture. I can also stamp on it. This is stamped with archival, right? Because it's oil-based, I can stamp right over that alcohol ink. And it just creates some beautiful works of art. This just was a happy accident. This was me inking a panel, hating everything I did, <laughs> picking it up, putting blending solution on the entire thing, and then it did this, and I'm like, okay, new technique. And I just <laughs> left it like, and then I started doing that to everything I touched, right? It was like, how are you getting that flow? I'm like, just ink it as you would, and then rinse it all off, and that's what you get. So let's do some demos. Let's show you how this stuff kind of works together. Let's we'll start with some pearls. And uh, I think I'll use, yeah, I'll use a panel, never mind. So the pearls, you do need to shake them up. Now, what I would suggest if, if you have an alcohol storage tin, right, and you have, you're gonna put pearls in there, I prefer to now store mine like this. And the only reason I do that is as long as your caps are on, if your lids aren't on, that's on you, okay? <laughs> but the reason I like that is because with anything that you need to shake, if it's a smaller area, you just have to shake more to get it all to go together. But if it's sideways, your pearl can actually lay out. So when you pick it up, it's like two or three shakes and the whole thing is mixed up. So if you're gonna use your inks a lot, this just saves a lot of time. But these don't take nearly the, the mixing power that you need for a mixative. You can hear those balls just kind of rattle right away because it's it's not that, that same pigment. It's really just a mica pearl that's in there. All right, let's go with some colors. These colors will work. I also wanna have some colors of ink. So let's take, uh, let's take a little wild plum, we'll take a little pool. What else do we have? You never really know with me. What is this? Oh, that's a pearl. That's alchemy. Ooh, that's a good one, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use the ink for that. We use dandelion. Okay. So, once I work with them, I'm gonna take the caps off. It's just how I like to work. Because I believe that if you use a lot of alcohol inks, 
if you just kind of open them up, you'll have much more freedom to just throw in a little splash of this and a little splash of that. If you stop every single time to take the cap on and off, well, you'll probably be like me and be like, eh, no, it doesn't really need red. I'm like, I don't want to get the red and open it. Yeah. Isn't that funny how we are? It's kind of weird. All right. So next I'm just going to take the pearls. Now you can apply these however you wish. You can apply them strictly with the tool or we can just go in and shake them on as well. And that's what I'm going to start doing. And just shaking on some of that pearl, I'm going to throw in some of that ink just to kind of get something going. The reason I start this way is I just need to get over myself. I need to just, you know, so, so many times you just say, where do I start? What do I do? If you just throw it on there, you have no choice but to just start working it in there. I'm just going to go in with the tool and just kind of mix that around just to create a little foundation. And then we'll go in and we're going to add some of that color. I think I just stained my craft mat. Let me just see. Lucky Tim. One moment, please. We interrupt this broadcast for a safety video. And that is when you... Like, I know better. Tim knows better. There we are. Alcohol ink will stain this mat. Now, mine at home totally looks like this. And I'm okay with that because it still works. But this is not my media mat. This is Randy, so I would hate to give it back dirty. There we go. Okay. So, as soon as I set that tool down on that fabric, I'm like, oh boy. All right. So here I'm just going to go in now. Hopefully the camera's going to pick it up. Let me try with a color like Celestial, because I know that one really shows a sparkle. I don't know if you're seeing that kind of oh, right sparkle. It, it looks a little sizzly when it goes on there. Can you see that pearl just like, can you see that kind of dancing a little bit? It's kind of hard for the camera to pick it up, but it's really, really cool. Yeah, it's awesome, but I'm also going to go in with my inks. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of color on here. Let's throw a little bit of blue on here. Throw a little bit of blending solution on this. Really play around with these because you're just going to get some great, great effects, great backgrounds using your alcohol inks and your pearls. Now, once I have this, now I'm just going to go, just going to be stupid silly with my inks. Just want to throw some different colors on there. Perfect. Yeah, we're going to use a little Splendor, little Villainous. I know, it's like you. Re names. I know, right? Tranquil, Envy. I love Smolder. Mm, that's <laughs> cool. yeah. yeah, Smolder is like this mushroomy, smoky, smoldery color, but it's got a, a very cool pearl color to it. All right. So at any point, you can just step away from the panel, but I want to show you uh, one of the things that I really like about working with this uh, with this board, okay? And some people will look at that and go, wow, that's just, that's great art. And I thank you, but it really isn't. All right, here's one thing to point out, and that's, that's why I just kept throwing stuff on there. Normally in the alcohol world, if we used alcohol ink and mixative, every time I shook on a layer, it would have separated what was down before, right? If we had inks and mixatives and you shake on that ink, it's gonna push away that metallic. But you can see here now that the whole thing almost looks pearlized. It's because when I was adding the ink, the, when the ink hits the alcohol pearl, it actually pearlizes that color. It will take over that other color and pearlize it. So it's just, it's totally different than what we've ever done with alcohol ink when we're used to like, oh, I'll use a little bit of pearl, a little bit of this, and I'll get that polished stone. You won't with that. So. Let's see if we can get a good drippage on this one. I'm just gonna dry it. It's gonna air dry, but I have no time for that. So I just wanna make sure it's dry. And then I'm just gonna take some blending solution. Mm -hmm. I know, you just want it like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like two steps back and do it. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah, that's that's So Tim, someone asked how alcohol inks um, play into mixed media. Um, and I think obviously this is a perfect background oh, to start your, you could add on top of this. So, and yeah, absolutely. You can add anything you want on top of this because in the world of mixed media, you can change up your substrate. So here we can use this as a foundation for collage. We can still use collage medium over this because that's water-based. We can stamp over the top of this. We can certainly add metal embellishments because alcohol inks will alter anything in mixed media. Everything from polymer clay to embossing powder to beeswax to canvas because it's a solvent-based ink. But even this, you don't have to know what you're doing. Clearly, well, I was doing it. I was just putting it on there. But 
having different substrates. It's really about finding uh, the best substrate for what you're trying to achieve. I think sometimes even as artists, we look at even watercolor. I know when I first started out watercoloring, I went in with watercolor and I was having the worst luck ever getting my color to move. Find out it was the paper because I thought the paper I was using was great watercolor, but not all watercolor paper is created equal. And then when you change that surface, wow, all of a sudden my colors look like what I see on YouTube. You know, my blends, well, not that good. <laughs> I'm no Christina Warner, although I wish I could color like that. But the point is like even with alcohol ink, if you've only used glossy cardstock, believe it or not, glossy cardstock, and that is to alcohol ink users, right? That's what we've had for years. This paper is the most porous paper you own. Anything will go into this. Even a water-based marker won't come off of that. A water-based marker becomes permanent on glossy cardstock, which most people just think, well, no, it's glossy. Wouldn't it just wipe off? No, it's going to soak right in. So if you use alcohol ink, and I did all that drippage like I just did, and I did blending solution, it's going nowhere, right? So you would think, oh, that didn't work. It was all about the substrate. So play around with different substrates to use this. But this... Yeah, we could do a lift on this. We can go in with our ink pad. That's pretty cool back there. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And if you kept going, like obviously on, on this one, just to show you the difference, this was just, you can tell, I just kept going with blending solution, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to have those breaks, but I discovered this one yesterday when I was dripping, like I kept getting these little breaks. I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. I like that, you know, as I was going, I it just because missing these little areas. So. I, I dig that. But if you want to all over blend, you're going to just kept going with blending solution from side to side all the way down, and then it would create that, that cool blended background. Pretty awesome. Yeah, that's, I think, what is really interesting. Now, let me show you Sparkle. <laughs> let me show you this one. Because okay, this one is interesting. This, you could use the alcohol pearls on this, but you don't need to because that shimmer is in the paper, not the ink. So, personally, I wouldn't use my pearls just because, well, they're pearls. I'm going to use them when it matters. And that would be because I want pearlescent background. So I'm just going to stick with my colors for this one. And I like to demo it because when I was first playing around with this paper, I thought when I added the ink that I totally screwed it up. And you'll see exactly what I mean. So seeing it is important because when you get when you get a pack of this and you go to use it, you're like, oh my God, I did something wrong. Something happens. Because when you apply the alcohol ink, it completely uh, erases all the sparkle for a moment. Okay but it will come back so don't freak your freak all right i'm just going to put some colors on there so again we could use the pearls if we want to but it won't change the finish okay doesn't make it any shimmerier <laughs> okay now i'm making it so see right away that sparkle gone right we just think something just happened like it's all it all went away if i throw on some colors Okay, even if I throw on some blending solution, right, maybe I want to drip on more of this. But you can see that everything that we're doing is just gone. Yeah, it, it, make, it breaks it up, but that sparkliness is no more. But when it dries, it will sparkle. And we can let it air dry, but I'll just show you that it is a heat stable surface. So when this alcohol ink dries, my sparkle will come right back. Yeah. I know. And you don't have to heat it to make this happen. It just, the alcohol ink needs to dry. So it's just important to see that when you put it on, you're like, oh my God, that didn't work. Because that's just what I thought. I'm like, oh boy, this is not alcohol ink paper. No good. And then I threw it in the garbage because that's just what I do. And then I looked in the garbage and I'm like, wait a minute, it's sparkly again. <laughs> okay, Tim. Okay, Mr. Impatient. Let's see what happens. And you know, another thing I wanted to, of course, see if it, is it heat stable? Can I dry it? That sort of thing. But this, believe it or not, gets that reaction that I've never ever seen with a sparkly paper because normally a sparkly paper, if I try to change my background, it's too late. If I drip the color on there, that drip is forever a drip. But this has kind of that same kind of cool factor. If I wanted to create that blend or that drip. Yeah, people are going to be like, I need blending solution like in a bug spray. Yeah. Like, you know, I need one of those outdoor garden pumps now with the blender. Yeah. But it's cool. And, it's, and ironically, Ranger just released a mini blending solution. Yeah. They're like, look, we have a blending solution in a tiny size. I'm like, mm. yeah, one of those are really good if you're 
yeah. the workshop. But it's great because of the tin. Ahead. It was really designed because if you have the storage tin and you wanted to just take a nice set of inks with you and you need blending solution because that is the magic elixir, mm -hmm. now you have one that fits in the tin. And that was really why we did it is that, you know, if you, were, if you wanted to travel with it or you needed some storage, right. look at that. Stop it right now. Beautiful. Ridiculous. Yeah, but now we have that little cute little blending solution that just fits. Yeah, it's so exactly. cute. It's cute. <laughs> and you could refill it if you want. I mean, you could pull out the top and fill it with your big one, but yeah, that is sparkle, silver sparkle. That's just, that's magic. And you could ink over it again. So everything you're doing with your surface, if you wanted to ink on it, stamp on it because it's really smooth, it's pretty awesome, you know, in our, yeah, in our alcohol world, it's really awesome to be able to see that a surface can completely change a product, right? We, we, you see alcohol ink, we're used to this, and this is just beautiful, right? You want that, no, you want to put that right in your phone case. But this is very cool, but being able to, to take that and just change the overall appearance simply by changing a substrate, that's what's always, I think, exciting in the craft world, is giving me, give me something that I can use what I already have, but it's gonna give me something slightly different. You may not want everything sparkly, you may not want everything blended, but I really love uh, the alcohol ink surfaces and the new pearls are just, man, so, so cool. Archival, yeah, archival is just my thing. The reason is, especially on alcohol ink, if you stamp with a solvent-based ink, solvent reacts with solvent. So if you stamp with a solvent-based permanent ink over alcohol ink, your image will wick, it will blur. So that's why I love archival, because it's oil-based, it sits right on top, just like this. This is archival ink on a background, stamped right over the top. And you can see that it just has just great, crisp clarity. It's just awesome, so very cool. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, you guys. It was awesome. Okay, guys, I want to show you some of the word samples, if you'd like to see. I'm gonna put the eyes around. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, I wanted to show you some samples. Um, will Lift Ink work on the Sparkle cardstock? Um, I don't believe it would, um, but I will confirm and reply back to you. Um, so let me show you some board samples. So first I'm gonna go into alcohol ink since we just were talking about that. And we have, so here's the matte black. Um, and this is done by Sharon. I posted a video of her yesterday um, on Instagram. Sh is Sharon around? Of course Sharon is around. She will be demoing uh, later today and uh, I will definitely post some video and photos. But here are some of her work. Now this is that matte black cardstock. Um, and you want to start with snow cap as your base and then add your colors on top. And here's a painting she did on the sparkle. And yes, we love Sharon. Sharon is awesome. And here's one on the Yupo. And then down here I have the brushed silver. Look at how awesome that is. And then down here again, the sparkle with the peacock. And then another, now this is the new pearls on the matte black. Let me see if I can get it for you guys. I don't know if you can see that shimmer on there, but it is beautiful. And then for card makers, um, you know, all these surfaces work for everything. So we do have some card samples. Um, this background is actually the pearl mixative. And we have the sparkle with alcohol inks. And some more, um, this is the brushed silver with pearl and yeah the pearls on black are really pretty um, and then of course here this is our lift ink now if you haven't tried the lift ink um, this is the effect that that achieves and here's a card on the pearl the sparkle I'm sorry so those are some alcohol ink samples and I'm gonna stand up I had to get pretty low to show you guys that I'll show you some Tim uh, distress samples. Just kind of, and there's that lift ink again, actually. So there's some Tim samples. I'll come around here. I have two more boards to show you. These are distress samples.
And then one more on the other side here. Let me take you around. One more board of distress samples. Look how pretty that card is. Oxides. These are spray stains. I think this is one of Tim's new Sizzix dyes, the robot. Look how cute that is. Of course, um, this is um, crackle paste here. Okay. So that is it for um, Tim. I thank you all so much for joining uh, his live. I hope you are enjoying the new products and stay tuned. I will be live again uh, today with Dina, um, Dina Weekly Media. So be sure to keep checking back on our social and uh, look for more exciting live videos. Thanks for tuning in.